Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. Excited for this show because, as I expressed a little earlier, I definitely have someone who's turned out to be very fascinating to me and a first timer on the show. It's a visionary author of best selling books, an award winning filmmaker, and so much more. Definitely a healer who I'm excited to explore these realms with. Dare to Dream has been nominated for a Webby Award, two People's Choice Podcast Awards, and was written up in Welp Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. We thank them all so much for the accolades. This show is sponsored by Dr. Jane here in Access Consciousness. They do energy work all over the world. If you'd like to become a facilitator or take one of their courses, just go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R dot com or accessconsciousness.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger, and I teach healers, entrepreneurs, business owners the time effective steps to write a highly engaging book. I also run a company that takes authors' books to a guaranteed international bestseller, and I do all the heavy lifting. And the third leg of my visibility hub is showing you how to be interviewed on podcasts and media and get massive results. If you're ready for more visibility, I've got some great free gifts for you so you can get there quickly. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift and get your videos and your templates and your how-tos so you can get on the track right now. I think it's more important now to be visible in media and use that medium while the world is shifting as it is. That's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. So my guest today is Caroline Corey, who's going to be talking about her latest findings and her scientific investigations on UFOs and extraterrestrial contact. She is somebody who has been working on films and during her last production, she teamed up with scientists and technology experts who were able to record, collect, and analyze UFO sightings in real time over multiple military grade state-of-the-art devices in multiple locations over multiple days. This is a first in UFOlogy and the findings apparently are mind-blowing. Caroline will also open up the connection of consciousness and intention with the various UFO sightings and interaction with potential extraterrestrial life. This is sure to be a fascinating conversation to open doors into future research and the understanding of this phenomenon. And among her recent accomplishments, her films, Among Us and Superman, The Invisible Made Visible, have won nine film awards and multiple nominations at various festivals around the world. Her latest film is A Tear in the Sky, an unprecedented scientific investigation into UFOs and is due to be out in May 2022. You can learn more about Caroline Corey at omnianuniverse.com. And with that, I welcome Caroline Corey to Dare to Dream. It's so great to have you. Debbie, so nice to see you, finally. Yes, <laughs> yes finally. And yeah. it's so cool how you came on the show. You know, everything's so energy. I get pitched and, and sometimes it doesn't make sense and I'll go, okay. And then I'm doing the research and I'm like, oh my God, what a blessing. So I'm so glad you're here uh, to explore with you. And then I had the time to find out more. And so let the games begin. I want to start with you as a child, and I think it makes a lot of sense now that I've seen some of your abilities, like on YouTube, child in your life, you claim you've had UFO encounters, ESP, precognition experiences. Can you talk about this, when these began, and what kind of support you had or didn't have? Yeah. Um, so when I was five years old, I had the first, I want to call it significant experience uh, that I remember. I'm sure I had before that, but <laughs> that one, what happened was um, I was just there and all of a sudden I come in contact with these magnificent beings and uh, we started communicating telepathically. 
And so at this time, at that time, I realized that I could see them, hear them, sense them and communicate. And so uh, the energy was so amazing. It was like, just this is like a blanket of love. You know, it wasn't scary. It wasn't weird. It was more like, oh, that's what it's supposed to be like, you know? So I went with it and I, and that's when I realized they kind of showed me what my brain was doing to be able to communicate spontaneously like that. And they also said, and that was huge. Now I realize how huge it was. Uh, they said, if you want this communication to be maintained, you have to ask, meaning you have to focus your intention very specifically for that to happen. So I'm five years old, right, Debbie? I was like, okay, that makes perfect sense. And I'm like, I want this, I want this, you know? But that is what got me asking questions. Wait a minute, what just happened here? You know, how come I could see and hear and nobody else could? Um, what did my consciousness do to achieve that? Can anybody do that? And so because I was asking these questions, I got into the field of consciousness studies. So I developed methodologies for communication, for healing, for um, all sorts of things that we should normally be doing. And, um, and, you know, I trained thousands of people from around the world. You know, I did that for like 20 years. I wrote books, trained people, spoke about it. And uh, eventually, and of course, it's all connected with, uh, you know, experiences of UFOs, of coming in contact with the extraterrestrial life. It's all one thing, you know, it's basically this visible realm that is part of this much, much larger consciousness. And so I'm basically the bridge between the two, creating the language and the methodology. So in a nutshell, <laughs> that's kind of how it evolved. And then I started working with scientists and I was like, wait, you know, whatever we're doing is working. We are getting validation, you know, whether it's healing or a message or anything, I want to bring that to the mainstream. And this is when I started making films about it. So, you know, I have a few films out there. Uh, the latest one I think is everybody needs to watch. It's called Superhuman the invisible made visible. And we literally bring, I mean, we show people um, scientifically uh, how the mind is interacting, is affecting the physical world. Um, so I'm gonna stop here because I can just keep going. <laughs> okay, two questions. So Superhuman and the other films, where can people watch them? Yeah, so uh, they can go to superhumanfilm.com for, for the film Superhuman. And the previous one that is more on extraterrestrial Among Us, it's uh, they can go to godsamongus.com. Okay, but, Yeah, or omniumedia.com all, has all my films, including the one that's coming up, which we haven't talked about. <laughs> yeah, okay. And when you were sharing this amazing sounding experience, do you know that anyone else in your family had experiences such as this or was it unique to you? You know, I found out much, much later that my aunt was, I mean, uh, she was into like astrology and stuff like that and aura. So she was very open. And I heard of a great grandmother who could see angels, you know, but that's about it. And so sometimes people ask me, well, here you are, you're five years old and you have this, did you tell anyone? I actually didn't, you know, because at the time I thought it wasn't anything special. I, I thought it was like, oh, all kids do that. If anything, I thought I would be embarrassed. Like if I say, hey, I'm talking to angels or, you know, or extraterrestrial beings and they'd be like, so what, you know? So, so I kept it to myself and which was a good thing because my parents would have said, stop that or something, you know? Um, so I just kept it to myself. 
until much, much later, until I realized like, wait, not everybody's doing that. <laughs> and I started talking about it then. And you mentioned that they showed you what your brain was doing. Yes. Yeah. What does that mean? What did they show you? What were you able to perceive and harness at five years old? So, so basically, you know, I'm exactly at five years old. So it was hard. It's hard to describe in terms of language because the communication is not language. It's concepts. It's like ideas, it's thought patterns that transfer from their consciousness to my consciousness. And so the brain is it's like a zip drive. So they send the zip drive, the zip drive in itself cannot be read. It needs to unfold, unzip uh, into your brain. So they showed me how this thought pattern, whatever they were saying, and it would be like several pages of a book, for example. So an entire uh, pattern would, would move from their, their consciousness to mine. And then I would see like my brain was like unfolding, you know, the, the information. So from the zip, it became like those five, six, seven pages of information, but in such a way that it would understand the whole thing in one second. So, so they told me, so they were showing me how the process was working and how my brain has this, the, the natural ability to do that. All I had to do is focus on this one central point. And that central point, I mean, later I understood what that is, but at the time they were like, just go there, you know. Um, it's basically a zero point. It's a point, you know, the, the brain is geometric. It has a geometric pattern. So because of that, it's like a hologram. There's a central point, it's like a torus. The central point is outside time and space. So when you focus on that point, you maintain the entire brain structure in perfect coherence with the universal grid, with, with the planetary grid and with the uh, larger grid system or patterns of the universe. So it's kind of like a Russian doll, like the small doll fits perfectly in the larger doll and the larger doll. And larger. If the smaller doll is crooked, then, you know, it doesn't get the information. But if it's perfectly aligned, focusing on the zero point, then all the Russian dolls like, boom, 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 you know, what I open up and you can get any information from any point in space, because your brain has become coherent with all time space points within the universe. That's how telepathic communication works when you're receiving a mess message and instantaneously from the Pleiades. I mean, the information didn't like hop on a spaceship and <laughs> you know travel linearly. It's instantaneous because of that coherence. Amazing. Okay, so for folks who are interested in this and want to find out, well, what's the best way to discover my, our unique prenatal contract and relationship for specific ET species that we may currently either be connected to subconsciously or consciously, how is it that we can do that? Yeah, so um, the methodologies that I've taught, you know, for all these years are on my website, you know, they can go to carolinecorey.com. Uh, but it, they're all based on the same principle, which is that coherence. So there is a meditation, I made it super easy, super simple. One simple meditation can set uh, uh, called connecting to source, meaning you become coherent with source. Um, it's on my website, it's free of charge then there are very specific exercises. And there's also classes on understanding how this planetary grid, this larger structure works so that you know how, to, when you position your brain within this larger structure, what point in your brain is actually tapping into the Pleiades? What point in the brain is actually tapping into Arcturus or whatever? So, so all of this kind of specificity and discernment, it's a bit of training. I mean, we've never taught, been taught any of this. So that's why, um, you know, it's all on the website. They can go and see 
how to discern subtle energy, how to receive, how do you, a lot of people get messages, of course, you do too, you know, many people, but is there a method, you know, to be able to discern, okay, this came specifically from my higher self versus my spirit family versus an evolved extraterrestrial being that's helping me and working with me versus the archangel, whatever, you see what I mean? Like how do you have that clarity and discernment? Mm -hmm. So all of that is part of the training that I've developed because I think that is the fundamental basis of everything else. If you are not clear on the guidance, how can you heal? You can have a sense, okay, so my stomach's not doing well or, you know, have this chronic issue, what have you. So, yeah, of course, you can bring in loving energy. You could do Reiki. You could do all sorts of stuff that are very helpful. But what if you're able to quickly go to the root cause of the root cause of the root cause, the very first point in time space which is most likely not even from this time space and i'm not even talking about a past life it could be another universe even you know what i mean how do you go straight to that first root cause undo it reprogram it so that the current issue disappears so it's that sort of specificity and that sort of training um, that is available okay very interesting. Um, and I am fascinated by it because it seems to me that that's what connects with your healing work and your healing abilities, that you must access, access this in order to see a matrix of what's really going on through somebody uh, because the work you do is palpable. So for who I know, because I watched a couple of the videos and I was sitting there completely puddled. <laughs> whatever that was going on between you and them. And it seemed profound in each of these people's spaces. And by the way, these are free webcasts, folks. So you can watch her do these yes. healings. And on my YouTube them. channel, yeah. Which one did you do? I did two to start with. I did the one about um, someone who was an unexpected guest on her, I think it was financial anxiety. You weren't sure what she was yeah. gonna come with. The one that was and that was super interesting what came out of that for her the one that was very profound for me was the one you did with the woman from australia about her chronic pain yes addiction yeah and and she had had an intestine um surgery and had had terrible things befall her well during the surgery but then thereafter and that was so powerful i almost felt like um besides the specific things you were talking about with her body, I've had chronic pain in my left hip that I've been dealing with. And you could have been speaking to me about her family stuff. And I was just, I listened twice. I thought, let this come into my space again, because this is so powerful. Exactly. And you just, you just said it, it's a matrix. So we think like sometimes, oh, when we were a child, like we had this one trauma and then that's the reason why we're this or that today. Yes, it's true. But the way it registers in your body is like a matrix. So the very first day moment that uh, you have an experience, you know, your dad, you're young, the, you're, the dad leaves the house, home, the mother is devastated, you know, whatever. And so, and so you have emotions uh, that are unpleasant that gets you to a belief system. Uh, you start thinking, I am abandoned. I'm not good enough uh, for my father to stick around or what have you. So you start creating these belief systems that you didn't have before. You didn't come in thinking that way. You didn't come in as a baby thinking I'm not good enough. How could you not be good enough? You're, you know, so, so, so you start with that first belief system and where does it go? People think that our thoughts, because they're invisible, like they, they don't exist, like they're abstract and they disappear. Mm, they don't. It's an actual physical vibration and frequency. It's, you can actually measure it that goes in your body. It's like it doesn't go out of it because you're talking to yourself. 
you're saying I'm not good enough. So it's going to go in whatever organ that's this, the most vulnerable at the time. Let's say it's your stomach for that lady. And then you already have that. Now you're living, you continue your life living with this one belief system. So then the next time you have whatever experience, you're going to go into it already thinking I'm not good enough. And that you're going to have another experience that's going to pile up and give you certain emotions. And you're going to come to the conclusion of yet another belief system. I am, um, I'm a failure. Add that to the top, you know, on top of what you already have. And that gets registered in your heart and so on and so forth. So as you're growing up, you're piling up all of these thoughts and beliefs in your body, in different places in your body, stuck mostly in one of the organs. That's why at the age of 35 or 45, you start having problems in that one location, right? In that one place. And so, but to undo that, if you go only to the stomach and take out whatever cyst or whatever happened, ended up happening because of all of this accumulation of patterns, it's almost like, it got registered in your body like a web, like a matrix. It's throughout your body. And so the method is that, yes, to find the root cause the very first moment you had that thought in your stomach, but you also have to delete it from all these other places because it's a matrix becomes that's what a pattern is. And so as, you, as you're doing this methodology, you're going to see the one thought and belief in your throat and then the next one in your heart and then the next one in your back and then so on and so forth. And then you're going to be extracting people and other people's frequencies. And so it's kind of like you, you're undoing that pattern all the way to the very first time. And then when you take that one off, the whole matrix falls off and you're done. So it's very sophisticated, but it's also very precise. It's not just, hey, let's bring healing in general. So that's kind of what I trained myself to do and trained so many others, that sort of specificity. So you have to be clear yourself first in order to be able to see with clarity like that. And okay, so to be clear, you teach this method. People can become a facilitator in this? Absolutely. And I taught it for many years. Um, but now because I'm making all these films, I don't teach as much, but it's all on my website. Like people can literally just download the classes. They can see all the images, like all the, you know, the, um, and, and then practice sessions. Uh, that particular class, it's the healers program. Okay. And then uh, they will learn the methodology um, that also includes light, sound, geometry, all sorts of, you know, gravity pull, you know, all sorts of different techniques that are, are based on the same principle. Awesome. So this makes so much sense when you describe it like this, because this one particular person, even though it was the intestines, you would go to her liver, you would go to her spine, you would go to her shoulders. Sometimes she would come back to the intestines. And yes. so this makes sense of what, what you're seeing and removing, so to speak. And she is uh, willingly releasing as well, a powerful stuff. Um, before I move to the next question, where are you from? Because somewhere I read that you're from San Diego, but I thought you don't feel like San Diego. You don't sound like San Diego. You Is mean what like planet, what universe? Well, okay. what? <laughs> That's on the table too. Oh my God. I feel like I'm totally from everywhere and from nowhere. And uh, I'm originally French, but you know, that doesn't even count. I, I don't feel like I belong to any sort of one place like I don't believe I don't belong anywhere and I belong everywhere that sort of feel that's how yeah. I felt the energy I got yeah. from you it's like wow this is you talk about global this is beyond <laughs> universal like yeah I feel that too it, and, it it's, and I also really I sincerely don't feel I relate to any one mm, culture or once it's like I really feel I'm part of like an earthly you know uh society you know I, I really feel that way like for example but from a practical standpoint like I lived in Japan for seven years I totally felt like 
I could be from there. Mm -hmm. Then of course I grew up in France. So I was, of course I had, you know, that I had the European thing. Uh, I'm, I'm from the United States also. So it's like, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's like, I really genuinely feel that uh, there's no boundaries and no land or um, this sort of identity. You belong. You belong I belong. <laughs> I belong and I don't belong. <laughs> Well, right now, there's so much going on with UFOs, UAPs, the extraterrestrial field. I would like to get updated. Anything you know currently, because you're very much on the pulse of all of this, what is going on right now with the visitors? Well, they've definitely uh, increased their uh, presence, that's for sure. But if you're talking more in a 3D sense, like what's happening in the disclosure and stuff like that, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it's all the same. Not so much. Yeah, they keep, yeah, me neither. I actually don't pay so much attention really because it's, there's always some sort of scenario, you know, that works for whoever, some sort of agenda. So, but in general, I, so for example, maybe this will bring me to, speaking about this last film that's called A Tear in the Sky. It's coming out uh, early May, so in three months, you know. And uh, so we, I wanted to go out and film UFOs um, in the film, you know, as opposed to analyze or talk about what's already out there. I said, well, is there a way to go out and like, <laughs> you know, and, and film it live and see what happens? I mean, it's a huge gamble because hello, we have like, we're paying for cameras and crews and like, you know, it's a huge, huge investment. And so I had, and I was doing it with scientists who don't want to go there, but I was, you know, in, in my, in my um, hotel room, I was like, okay, you guys, <laughs> you know, it's like, we have got to make this happen. Work with me. What's going on? And so, because we're only there five days, like, well, what if no, nobody, nothing shows up, you know, right? So, so I was like very strong strongly connecting with uh, the intelligence that was beyond. And they were saying like, they are making their presence. First of all, they did collaborate and we got crazy stuff in the movie as a side note, but, but they were saying that they're literally on the cusp of, I want to use the word leaking, you know, because I feel like that was, that's kind of a connected question or answer the wall is like the dimensional fields are thinning. It's almost like before you had black and white and a huge gray area. So if you are on one side looking to the other side, you had to go through this very thick, long uh, range of frequencies. And so when extraterrestrials would show up, it's kind of like, it would take a long time in a way. And even when they did make it to the side, they couldn't sustain their presence for very long. So they'd have to kind of retreat, so to speak, if that makes sense. But now with the way the planetary system is moving, the planetary grid, grid has shifted, the axis of the planet, the, all the cosmic alignment, the uh, astrological alignment, all of those things as of this year anyway, it's been happening for a while, but now from 2022, that wall is literally super thin. So that if you have an extraterrestrial on this side who just wants to make a little like peak or something, like they're gonna like fall off, you know what I mean? And they're gonna be extra, super, super visible. That's why I said leaking. So it's gonna be easier for them to come to the side and sustain their presence and easier for us to see them. So, and that also what this, the way this affects the physical brain is it opens the pineal gland for one additional octave of light. Meaning you can, right now we only see one octave of light. There's a hundred octaves of light in the, you know, we only see this much, right? The visual spectrum. So an additional octave is huge. So, so it's almost like instead of going the visible spectrum and then nothing, you can't see x-ray, you can't see, I mean, the average person, I can, but, <laughs> and some people can, but 
but so instead of going from visible to nothing, you're going to go from visible to somewhat visible to less somewhat visible to not visible. You know what I mean? So you've added, you're, you've ex extended that octave of light, meaning you're going to be able to see spirit, UFOs, all sorts of uh, things that were hard to see. They're going to be much easier to see, which helps a lot because when you're saying, you're talking to somebody who's not sensing something and then you're like 100%, you know, you know, it's going to be easier for them also to see these things and sense these things. And when I say see, it's not only visual, it's also the sensing, the feeling, the, the whole experience. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And so it makes me wonder then, is there a connection when you say all this between consciousness and intention? Because you use some of this for these UFO sightings, as well as the ET interaction. So we have a better understanding of the phenomenon. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's what I started to say during the film. Um, I was like, you know, these guys I was working with, they were like, okay, let's just go and point our cameras and our equipment. And I'm like, uh, no, we have to kind of like have the intention. And because we, not everybody was on the same page, I had to do the work myself. I was like, some of them were, but I, it was, this was a big production. This is a big film. This is a huge film. People need to see this. It's never been done this way before. It's crazy what we did. So, um, but anyway, all this to say that I had, the, none of this would have happened if I had not put a very specific intention. And anyway, I mean, regardless, extraterrestrial contact or not, nothing happens ever without intention, without focusing your intention. So, you know, that, that's, that's, that's fundamental understanding. And now more than ever before, um, you want to do this again, because the walls are thinner, like it's literally super thin right now. So this is the, more than ever the time to, to be practicing that. Okay. Yeah. And it just harkens me back to what you said in the very beginning about being five years old, when you're getting these zipped downloads and they say to you, you must ask. Exactly. Ask you employed this five days of shooting. What did you know exactly where you were going to go? Was it very precise locations? And what happened? What did you see? Uh, yeah. So what happened was uh, we uh, wanted, to, I mean, so I ended up, originally I was teaming, teaming up. I was going to create a team of scientists and experts and stuff. And I stumbled on this group uh, that they, they had the Navy uh, folks who experienced those t UFOs, those, those Tic Tacs. And they already had a couple of scientists working with them and thought, oh, well, that's perfect. Cause then I can just, you know, bring that team together um, and do an expedition from scratch. And because they were involved, I thought, why don't we make it that we're attempting to capture the Tic Tacs? That wasn't our original idea, but the location was uh, the, place where um, they caught the Tic Tacs and where they keep ca catching the most Tic Tacs, which is off of the coast of California, um, off of Los Angeles and the Catalina area. So that's why we said, you know what, let's, there's many places that I can think of, you know, in Utah and I mean, Arizona, I mean, you know, but because of the cast and what the direction of the film said, let's go back there and see what happens. And so, so that's kind of, so we ended up, I mean, I don't want to like spoil the surprise, but one of the things I already said, Tease us though. I, 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 already, I mean, I already kind of said one of the things was, was Tic Tac objects that traveled exactly in the same way. Um, and many other types of things that, you know, definite anomalies. So because we had scientists, so, so it's not like, you know, a bunch of people like just pointing a couple cameras and saying, oh, this looks anomalous. No, I mean, it was thorough investigation, studying the files, also doing what's never been done before, 
correlations with other instruments. So for example, we had instruments that measured uh, the magnetic field, others that measured uh, the gamma ray burst, you know, radiation, others that measured the acoustic uh, vibration, you know, so we had a huge, I mean, the trailer is insane. In fact, I should probably show it um, at some point. Uh, I'll show it during the conference at the Conscious, Conscious Life Expo. That's and nice. you will see the uh, the amount of equipment we had. We had cameras, uh, you know, they're called FLIR cameras, military grade. This is what the military uses. Um, they measure the temperature of objects. Uh, and of course, it's the infrared range that's beyond the typical camera infrared, you know, you know, commercial uh, consumer level. It's like... <laughs> And so, so we, would, we were capturing objects that would register cold. So how could an object fly in the sky and measure cold if it has a propulsion system? Propulsion systems should have heat that, you know, according to the laws of thermodynamics, you know, I mean, and so that's when, for example, we know it is an anomalous object. Then we study the file, we make sure uh, do we have it from a different angle? Do what did is there was there radiation that happened at the same time? So I mean, it was that sort of very rigorous investigation that would, and then finally we would come to the conclusion: this is a hundred percent an anomalous event because boom, 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 all of that stuff. So that's what people are going to see in the film, and what we ended up finding. I can't. I don't want to say everything. Yes. Crazy stuff. Crazy crazy give can you give us one something that you didn't know before yes okay by virtue of doing this you now know okay well uh i already i'll tell you but the tic tac i told you uh, already there's other ones too i'm not gonna say i'll let people have a surprise but we did find also a, an anomaly that looks like what we think is a wormhole crazy <laughs> so uh you know of course these are scientists they're not going to just look at something and say oh okay we're going to call it wormhole especially a wormhole because it's not really like they don't even know what a wormhole is you know what i mean so 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 but we captured something that uh basically opened and closed and there's like a bunch of like physical objects like that came out of it because <laughs> they say uh, that's often how they travel people have said how is time travel possible? These are parallel universes, future, past, concurrent, uh, you know, so far away it's impossible, but that sounds fascinating. That's it's beyond fascinating. And, you know, so, so of course we run it by NASA, by far, like all the organizations, like, what is that? Is that some sort of atmospheric, like, uh, event that we don't know about yet? Is it, I mean, nothing checks out. So what is it? <laughs> you know so when you capture because it's not even an observation we captured things on camera multiple devices and from multiple locations pointing at the same thing uh and nobody can no scientist on the planet can tell us what that could be then that's that's pretty intriguing yeah it is are you, yeah. Caroline, yourself, are you in constant contact with a species or several species of alien races? Yeah, so uh, when I was five, that those beings that came in contact with me were what I call my spirit family. Like, it, that's, that's another reason why it felt so comfortable. It was like, oh, what took you so long kind of thing, you know? It was a recognition of a vibration, of a feeling. And those beings, and another reason why they came at the age of five is because to teach me that whole intention thing is to tell me that they will be with me my whole life. Hmm. And so, and that's the way to maintain the connection. And so it's kind of like I was on this side of the veil in physical form and they were my continuation. Like there's no, no stopping. It just like I, they continued to be me or I continued to be part of them this way. And so 
And so th that it was the purpose of this interaction, this locking in um, for me to continue maintain that. But that also showed me where I was from. <laughs> and I realized, and that was a huge understanding, mm -hmm. is that everybody has their own lineage. So that's why some people talk to Palladians, others talk to Syrians, others talk, like, why aren't we all talking to the same Palladians, for example? Because... <laughs> Yeah, because it's it's your unique lineage that you are bringing through and it's extremely purposeful because as I maintain this consciousness that is my lineage, everything that I do on this side of the veil, meaning in human form and physical form through this apparatus, through this body, every time I speak, every time I breathe, every time I express myself or whatever I create art, it doesn't matter. It is my entire divine, cosmic, whatever you want to call it, lineage that's coming through this particular human form. Mm -hmm. So if you did that with the Palladian lineage, and he did that with the Syrian lineage, and he did that with the Arcturian lineage, what happens is that on the earth plane, we are pouring into the collective consciousness, this new energy, these new patterns, so, so that the future human has this hybrid, you know, has this, uh, evolves with all this knowledge from the universe, because we're all bringing it through. That's why our role here is to awaken to our lineage, because if we're not conscious, we're not bringing anything true. You see, so it's not about mediumship. It's about this apparatus being so pure and so ready to bring the energy through in its purest form so that we can contribute in our own unique way. Our lineages can come through and evolve the human lineage to the next level of awareness. And with your connection with them, do they give you missions? Do they say, here's a project we'd like you to take on and it's going to help us on the other side, help humanity and, you know, see if you're willing to step up to the plate? A hundred percent. My whole life is, has been a mission. I feel like every chapter is very specific. Some chapters have been to not be in public at all to just figure out all, all the training that I've taught and everything else. So when I look back, it's very, very specific. Like certain, uh, certain times in my life, I wasn't supposed to be talking. I wasn't supposed to be teaching. I was, you know, and I was doing all kinds of like reconfiguring and all sorts of things inside me so that I could go out and do it. And then at one point it was teaching, 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 teaching. And then at one, another point it was, oh, and writing, writing, writing. And then now it's movies, movies, movies. So it, it, it's definitely uh, very specific when you are conscious uh, that every chapter has a specific mission. Of course, under the same bigger umbrella, but it keeps move you to, moving you to the next chapter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the post-COVID world seems to offer new opportunities for those who are willing to view it like that. And it's really possible right now to create a new worldview and a radical change. Is there anything you know of that's evolving right now into this new world, using science, using healing, ecology, consciousness, just ways that people may not be aware of, but is actually an opportunity and an availability? You mean a, a tool? Uh, I'm not sure I understand. Sure. Anything that um, in your discovery, whether it's in your contact with the your people, your lineage, <laughs> or it's with the work you're doing that allows you, my sense of you is that your matrix goes way beyond individuals and that it's probably global also and maybe even deeper than that. So that I'm really asking your wisdom. I guess the question and the scientist in you. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, I think the the 
we're at a juncture where I feel like I did this talk. If people want to listen to it as well, it's on my YouTube channel. I have a ton on my YouTube channel, by the way, if people want to go there, all kinds of meditations and classes and talks and stuff. So, um, you know, I highly recommend, but the last one I did was January. Like I always do one in the beginning of the year, uh, January, 2022. And I was saying that, what I actually just said, because the world, like there's no more gray area. It's like either it's black or white, either it's fear or love. Before we heard these concepts before, that part isn't new. But what's new is you don't have the option anymore. That's what's new and that's what's different. This makes it a sense of urgency. This makes it that if you are not going to quickly discern where you fall, you know, on whatever subject, it's going to keep you there. It's like, it's not going to happen. And so, so that's the reason why I encourage people to, and that's what I did in that talk. I, then I did the meditation to help people get there, um, to, to really look at every area of their life. And like what you were saying, the COVID thing is very interesting. So interesting. It's like COVID came and said, okay, stop, just stop. (laughs) <laughs> let's start over let's reevaluate everything in your life and so that kind of forced us into it but now you have to do it on an individual level like you have to really take charge of that look at every area in your life and be very clear do you want to heal or not do you want to succeed at this or not? Do you want to stay in an unhealthy relationship or not? Mm, okay. Do you want to, you know, it's like no option because if you stay in an unhealthy relationship out of fear, or out of misalignment or out of this, or out of that, like, it's just, it's, it's going to force you. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. It's going to happen for you. So that's why I'm saying this is the time for real engagement and decision making decision making yeah i understand it's a time of reevaluation i understand it's supposed to be a very good year and i also understand it may be a year of a lot of endings yes and i think we're seeing that just the enormous amount of celebrities who have passed away and been in the news uh, it's it's pretty you know unprecedented this early on in the year so as far as the the good things, um, the other let's say the opposite of reevaluating and reconsidering, uh, what are things we can harness this year that can make a really big difference, with, with the no choice that we have about stepping? It's, yeah, with all of that, what's becoming available is this new timeline. It's almost before, like you had this timeline, and this timeline, and you can take time to get on that bus and da, 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 you know, now it's like, no, it's either this or that. And it gets you boom, straight on the new timeline. What is the new timeline? The new timeline, it's a, it's a little bit of a long conversation, but I'm trying to summarize it. So, so there's a larger under, uh, kind of uh, plan, if you will, moving the earth and the entire planetary system into perfect alignment. We've been tempered with 200,000 years ago, and now we're being reintegrated within the universe, like in the perfect alignment. So that has started a long time ago, and we still have 250 years before that comes to completion. Meaning in 250 years, it sounds like a long time, but in terms of universe ages, it's nothing. It's like three generations. So in 250 years, it's almost like this is where the whole planet becomes perfectly complete and whole and in perfect resonance uh, with um, within its alignment with the rest of the universe, because it hasn't been. We haven't been getting the message of nothing. You know, it's been like a mess. What does that mean? It means at that time, there's no illness, there's no, you know, spirit is here, physical is here. It's it's consciousness. Everything is a consciousness-based society. It's, at a, it's, it's more of that understanding. So, so, so what, what bring, bring you back to where we are today, getting on, making that choice, uh, what's become available is, is, is a timeline, which is 
the fast track, it's like a new highway just opened up to get you to this 250 years, meaning you can start living at that level today. And what, and what this also means, you know, same thing, spontaneous healing uh, uh, on a mind level, the subconscious mind dissolves away. Think about this. All our fears, our confusion, why we do things, why we create things we don't want to create because of our subconscious mind. Uh, we say we want a relationship, but we can't get it. We say we want a money, but we can never attract it because the conscious mind is saying, I want a relationship. And the subconscious mind is saying, oh my God, somebody's going to come and take over my life and I'm going to be a prisoner. That's not, you don't create anything this way. Your, the conscious mind is saying something and the subconscious is saying the opposite. And so if the subconscious mind is no longer, then when you say, I want a relationship, boom, it happens. That is the new highway. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like all of these gray areas, hidden subconscious, you know, things that we just that got us in trouble actually because we couldn't tap into them are dissolving away so when you start to make that choice you start to manifest very very quickly and start to live at that level very quickly does that make sense it makes so much sense and it actually speaks to this impulse that i've had i do music um i'm a singer i sing in a band called lions of lyra like the planet Cool. We do, it's so beautiful. We do this um, music as medicine. We've performed all sorts of places. And I we're, we're shifting into these events, very healing events, very uplifting events, different than what anybody else is doing. And I, I can't even, I'm chomping at the bit so much. The energy keeps feeling to me like I'm at a racetrack and the gate's going to open and I must be there at the forefront. I've got to get dates on the calendar. We've, we've got to rehearse. The, the first one has to be next month. It just has to. I yes. feel no space for waiting anymore. Exactly. Like that's it. The, the highway is like there. And probably that energy wants to come through you. So much. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like as soon, because you made a choice. Mm. You said at one point, you said, I want to create the music of the future of whatever the energy, you know, and so no, that's what I'm saying. You made a choice. You're not like, oh, I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. I'm in fear. Everybody. You, you, you made a choice between the black and white. Boom. The highway is there and you manifest. And just think about that. You know, that when you start to, to think about anything and it just manifests instantly, like divine intervention, you know, kind of, I mean, you're intervening, but you know, so your life starts to change because you're observing the effect of your intention and your consciousness on your physical reality, just like that. Yeah. Build it, they'll come. Hello. Right. The place, Hello. the people, it all, it just happens. And it gets better and you learn and yes. I and then you do right. that and I do that and our friends do that. Then it starts to even build even more momentum. Mm. That's, okay. That's why like you should be like, you are the examples. Just do it and bring others with you. Yeah. That's great. That's beautiful. You know, in your film, Caroline, Superhuman, you talk about this blindfold training that's called InfoVision. And I know you offer these as courses to awaken our innate superhuman skills. Can you just talk a little bit about what this blindfold training consists of? Yes. Yeah, so uh, when I was making the film, everybody should see that film. It's huge how empowering it is to see actual uh, scientific experiments demonstrating the power of the mind over physical matter, telekinesis, and so on and so forth. And so at one point I saw these kids, uh, the first ones I saw were the ones in England and I was traveling in Europe. I said, I'm going to go see it for myself because you never know on the internet, you know? So basically the children were training themselves to, to see completely blindfolded. So I'm telling you right now, 
There's no, I don't know who does that as a trick. I don't know. I'm speaking for the ones that I have done and seen that I've taught myself that I know for hundred percent fact. So what happens, you're completely blindfolded. And in fact, you know, they are running, they're playing soccer, they're reading, they're, you know, playing ping pong, uh, perfectly precisely there's no hole in the mask even if there's a teeny tiny hole yeah you try getting on a bike or on a rollerblades or you know and you know completely blindfolded like that it is insane and then we see them able to see behind their back how do you figure so it's a hundred percent true that this is an ability that these kids and adults have developed. Now, the interesting thing is uh, it has many repercussions. I mean, you're going to say, well, I have eyes. Why should I be blindfolded and learn to read without my eyes? Because that's not the point. The point is you are training your brain to do something technically it's not supposed to do, and it doesn't. You're saying we see because there's light, the vision works because there's light, well, you're telling it, well, now you're going to see even that there's no light, and it does, cannot be more empowering uh, than that. You're basically manifesting a physical reality simply based on intention. And also, this training has a lot of side effects, I mean, positive side effects, you know, for kids who are uh, autistics or ADHD or have any sort of problems, it gives them self-confidence and gives them focus, gives them clarity, even adults as well. It has all sorts of additional benefits that uh, I thought it, it was incredible. And that's why I put it in the film as the last chapter. I think everybody should uh, see that as well. And we are teaching, we taught it online. When people go to superhumanfilm.com, they can see the classes there as well. Yeah, and you can see trailers to exactly what Caroline is talking about. It's, it's amazing to see these tiny little kids with a book and it's almost like they're completely covered. They can't see a thing. There's nothing here. And they're not, it's not, it's not like someone who would be reading. There's something else going on and yet it is very clear. They are, and they're, reading with rapidity it's so fast and amazing and then there's another little child sitting there <laughs> enjoying this story and she's i think was covered too yeah and everybody's covered. covered and when people who say oh it's a movie no please i mean come on i'm not gonna put my reputation on the line and put some tricks on you know in my film that's all scientifically based so so for example like uh, you also, they didn't know what I was going to show them. So they'd be sitting there and I'd like hold up just something, you know, or a letter or a word. They didn't know. So it was random and they would be like, boom, boom, boom. And so, so it's extraordinary. It's, it's incredible. And when you talk to these kids, I mean, I remember the little Justin, so cute, um, uh, I, I would say, so he would tell me the story where he would just uh, talk to, he would see Jesus and he would talk to him and he knew what planet he was from and he remembers his past lives, but he's talking like it's no big deal. These kids are talking about energy. They're talking about consciousness. Uh, they're talking about extraterrestrials like hey, let's go have lunch. I mean, like, no big deal. And that's when you know there's something amazing happening to them, with them, that they're, that's helping with that ability. Gorgeous. Oh, God bless. The next generation is going to be awesome. Um, the current. The current. You and me, too. <laughs> yeah. But so gifted. Like, I, I love, they don't have to go through all the weird decades of what we've witnessed, I think that it's so natural is, it says a lot about what's to come that makes me excited. Yes, awesome. I know that you're a frequent guest on TV shows like The Unexplained with William Shatner, also History Channel's popular Ancient Aliens. What do they bring you in for to be a featured expert? 
always when it has to do with consciousness, because that's my field, but also anything that has to do with invisible things, you know, aliens, communication, uh, topics also like Akashic records, you know, like uh, immortal, you know, beings and things like that. So uh, this is totally my field, you know, because <laughs> I work lived with it. you live there. Do you work? Do you have you met William Shatner? Have you worked with him at all in the show? Oh, he's in my new movie. Oh, nice. Yeah. A Tear it's in the Sky. A Tear in the Sky it has William Shatner in it. And uh, yeah. And so he, he's he was interesting. He was very, very, very fun. He's a bit of a clown. So we were trying to make like a scientific thing, you know, in the movie, but he kept like cracking these jokes. And we're like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I used the couple in the movie, but it was uh, it was a blast working with him. He's oh, awesome. That's so nice. Yeah. And you have upcoming the Los Angeles Conscious Life Expo. It looks yes. like you are you're giving presentations, you're on a lot of panels, you're going to be busy that weekend. I know, I know, I know, they put me in a lot of things. So I hope a lot of people will come because uh, we haven't done anything in person for a long time. Yeah. So I hope that it will, uh, it will be amazing. It's going to be amazing. I mean, I just love those conferences. So <laughs> me, too. me too. It's, it's a must. Um, I get, I, I have to fill up by going there. So I'll be there. Folks who want to go, it's the Los Angeles Conscious Life Expo.com. And just know if for some reason you're in a health condition or you're in another country that you can't go, you can still pay to, to live stream and you will be having front row seats. So they uh, have the camera and everything. You can pick and choose what you want to see. You will not be omitted from anything. So live, of course. I always recommend that's the best. And you can see people like Caroline right up close in person. It's going to be amazing. Huge venue. Tens of thousands of people come in and out. Well worth it. Uh, what do you do, Caroline, every day to ground yourself? Do you have like a ritual or a practice that you engage in? Yeah, I actually start out very, as soon as I open my eyes, I notice how I'm feeling, you know, I mean, like, because you wake up sometimes with emotions, whether it's a dream or something, or you're right away, you're worried about something that's going to happen. Your mind is already going. So before I get up, I'm like, okay, <laughs> reset, clear anything that's weird or whatever. And then, so I really do my breathing and I do um, a very quick reset in the morning with the intention. And then I go off throughout the day. I also do the same thing. Uh, you know, when I'm working, as soon as I feel myself going, you know, this is going too crazy. So I do like these little things throughout the day, you know, and then before I go to sleep, I do the same thing, except that I purge, you know, anything that uh, just sometimes it's conscious, sometimes it's subconscious, like whatever came in that wasn't mis that was misaligned that's not part of my purpose that's not serving me flush it out and i visualize i bring light again i do that meditation that's on my website 7 minutes long it's free connecting to source so you flush out everything else and then wrap yourself in the ball of source energy and set the intention for your sleep because people think like you're sleeping you're detaching but you're doing a lot of work and uh, many things can happen during your sleep. You could be out of body, certain attachments could come in, there's all kinds of stuff. So I said the last intention also before going to sleep. If So this is kind of my normal routine. It's just like micro, micro adjustments and just staying in this alignment. Oh, nice. Okay. Nice pieces people can add in there if they would like to. Um, just to remind you, her website, the universal website is om, omnianuniverse.com. And Caroline, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream? Future dreams or goals? For me, is uh, really uh, everything that I'm doing is for the purpose of evolving humanity. I mean, why else am I here? What am I contributing to, you know? And so my dream is for people to really, really feel within themselves 
at a deep cellular level, just like I did when I was five, their true essence, their connection to who they really are, their uh, original divine lineage. Because once they do, everything else comes. This, you feel centered, you feel calm, you feel clear, uh, you have a sense of direction, the healing comes, uh, the empowerment comes, the, the clarity comes, everything comes from that. So I am really hoping and wishing that everybody would achieve that this year and the years to come. That's beautiful. And remember, folks, you've got the highway and the yeah. time <laughs> now to do that. So it bodes very well. Get on board. It is truly our time. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's really, it's been a joy for me to have you. You too. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> and see you soon. I loved it. And may it be the start of more. I end today's show with this quote from Caroline Corey. If we want to create heaven on earth, then the starting point must be heaven, source, not earth. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Weekly Dare to Dream. Leave a comment, share, and next week on the show, the guest featured is William Henry. Perfect segue. He's an author, investigative mythologist, art historian, and the spiritual voice and consulting producer of the hit History Channel program, Ancient Aliens, as well as hosting two Gaia TV series programs. Thanks so much for joining us today. Remember, if ever it was your time, I hope you're receiving the message from this show. Don't just dare to dream, dare to get on the timeline and create the purpose, the mission, and your contribution of why you're here.